So the reason I call it headache advantage is because really, as you mentioned, pain is our advantage. It is there to inspire change and motivate us to change. And so the pattern of the headache really tells me the priority for that person's health dysfunction. You are listening to The Dr. Haley Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your health. Each episode, there will be an interview or a message to help you discover better health. We will be featuring health radicals on the show to bring new ideas to the table, as well as doubling down on key fundamentals to support you living your best life. Your host is no other than the founder of Haley Nutrition, Dr. Michael Haley. This is the Dr. Haley Show podcast. I'm Dr. Michael Haley, and today's guest, Dr. Scott Versal. He is the best kind of doctor there is. He's a doctor of chiropractic (laughs) and now author of a book called The Headache Advantage, an unusual title. We'll pick that apart a little bit and understand where he's coming from. He is going to help us understand, well, headaches more from a whole body perspective and not merely a lack of Tylenol. <laughs> Dr. Scott, right? Yes. <laughs> thank you <laughs> There's no for joining me. Deficiencies. Great intro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, you know, I, I want to know a little bit about your story. From what I've seen, I think you and I had similar experiences. Awesome. And for me, I went when I was about 13 years old to a chiropractor, not because I had any problems in my case, Mm -hmm. but my father went and the chiropractor said, oh, you got to bring your whole family. And I was the only one that volunteered. Yeah, I want to go and find out about chiropractic. Okay. And that night in football practice, I felt like I was just floating across the ground. I felt lighter and faster and more capable than ever before. That experience well, to me, it was almost like he did this Jesus thing, yeah. you know, <laughs> only Jesus was raising the dead. Right. It wasn't quite that magnitude, but it was the most like Jesus thing I've ever seen in human form. And I wanted to be more like Jesus and do Jesus things. Yeah. So I decided to go be a chiropractor. Perfect. What's your story? How did you get into this? Tell us about your debilitating headaches and your experience when you finally found chiropractic. Right. So very similar. Um, For me, it started as a young teen, hanging out at Winchell's, getting a donut before and after school. (laughs) And, you know, started getting into trouble as most teens would eating donuts for breakfast. And my loving parents took me to a holistic health practitioner at that time. He determined I was uh, hypoglycemic. They did a six hour glucose tolerance test and said, you know, hey, if you keep doing the things you're doing, you're going to have to give yourself daily shots. That kind of rung my bell. I didn't like needles so much. <laughs> and then I realized, hey, when I eat donuts, I, I, I don't perform. And, you know, I fall apart on the at that time, the racquetball uh, court and so on. I was working out and playing racquetball. So I, I realized the cause and effect at that point on sugar. So I swore off sugar at 14 years old, never turned back. And then a few years later, I started having gnarly headaches when I would uh, bench press. And I was a natural bodybuilder uh, early on early on, and continued on through college. And anytime I do bench press, I get these pounding headaches and, and tried all the aspirin, Advil, Tylenol and couldn't get any relief with that. So of course, we went to a doctor and they said, oh, you might have an aneurysm. Don't work out. Don't push it. You know, and here, you know, gave me the, the dye and the CAT scan and, and all that stuff. And said, well, you don't have an aneurysm, so go see a psychiatrist. And, you know, <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't think that's the answer. Thanks for your help, you know? And, right. and so that kind of started the journey. I had, by that point, I was into junior college and had done a self-interest test. My highest score was chiropractic. Didn't think I was going to go to school that long. And then I had my chiropractic experience, right? <laughs> kind of like you were talking <laughs> about. And and so he, he adjusted me. Uh, it, it, some again, a chiropractic intern that I met at the gym. Uh, he says, "I don't know if we can help. Let's let's check it out." And he adjusted at that time. Now I understand as C two at the top of the neck and L four. My headaches were colon related, so that'll kind of dovetail into what we're going to talk about today. But I had whole head headaches that would pound, especially with exertion. And the more I pushed through it, the longer the headaches would last. So he adjusted me and I same kind of similar experience driving home in my little yellow bug, just going like, wow, this is awesome. I, <laughs> I need more of this. How can I bless others with this experience? 
And so then as I realized, hey, chiropractic handles the structural component and handles the nutrition that I was already obsessing about my diet. And it was a, you know, it was match made in heaven from there on. You know, my first headache patient, mm -hmm. I wasn't even out of school yet. Yeah. I was in Marietta, Georgia, at Life Chiropractic right. College. And I was in a dart tournament and my partner that I got paired up in this tournament, I, I don't like to lose. I like to win things. <laughs> and she had a headache. I didn't want to play with someone that had a headache, that had an excuse for missing. Right. I wanted accuracy, <laughs> focus. I wanted her to be all there. And she had never had a chiropractic adjustment. Okay. I didn't have a license. I broke the law. <laughs> I sat her down in a chair, adjusted her neck. And she, with this skepticism, said, oh, and when is my headache going to... Well, wait, it's gone. <laughs> you know. Um, so what I'm realizing now is I gave her a temporary improvement. Right. The headache probably came back because I probably never got to the actual cause of the, well, what was expressed in her neck, whether we want to call it a subluxation or a, a malfunction or some kind of stored tension that was there, not necessarily getting to the cause of that physical change, just releasing which an effect that caused her headache. Right, right. Perfect segue. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let, let's talk about your book now then. The Headache Advantage. I'm a chiropractor. I know where you're coming from. Yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Pain can be our friend. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, tell me how a headache is an advantage. Right. And so kind of like you in perfect segue, in chiropractic is great. Acupuncture is great. Um, they'll take care of an adjustment. Kind of the thing that really throw it out in, in right up front. The thing that really gives me confidence, a hundred percent confidence on these patterns is that the headache never leaves the office and we can identify what the organ is um, for the very, the seven triggers to get rid of it. So the reason I call it headache advantage is because really, as you mentioned, pain is our advantage. It is there to inspire change and motivate us to change. And so the pattern of the headache really tells me the priority for that person's health dysfunction. So if they have a right-sided headache, that means that their gallbladder is the priority for them to start making change. So then we can look at what food triggers would co compromise the gallbladder. We can look at the emotions associated with the gallbladder. We can adjust T4 or C6, but I save that for last because I want to learn from it first, figure out what it is that they're doing in their lifestyle that's compromising, say, the right-sided, the gallbladder and causing a right-sided headache. Or again, from a aloe sort of perspective, you know, the whole head headache, like a headband, that is a colon issue. So we want to look at what it is. It's compromising the, the functioning of the colon so we can instill change. Uh, and the, the reason this is a major advantage is because when the colon dysfunctions, that sets up things like arthritis or, you know, leaky gut problems where things leak into the bloodstream and can set up those ugly cascades of all the inflammatory conditions. Um, I mentioned arthritis. I mean, all the way down to putting stress on the liver and opening the Pandora's box for things like cancer and so on. So we want to take advantage of what the body's yelling at or the head is, head is yelling at us about so we can make changes now before it's a, a big name condition and, you know, pro a big problem. So after treating the spinal issue, you're helping your patients understand the actual cause and then leading them through a plan of change to reverse that problem, I guess. Right, right. Is that with diet strictly or is other modalities? What do you do? Yes. So uh, most of what I do is founded in applied kinesiology, which brings in the structural needs, the nutritional needs, the supplemental needs, uh, nutritional meaning food, supplemental needs, and then the emotional paradigm as well. So organs have specific emotions associated with them. I there's many good techniques. I use several of them. Primarily, I use a neuroemotional technique from, that Scott Walker put together. Uh, that gives me the foundation to know that in this case, like when the gallbladder dysfunctions, it sets up emotions like anger, frustration, resentment, uh, galled, wouldn't you know, <laughs> for the gallbladder. <clears throat> um, and so it could, was it, you know, a significant period of anger that caused the gallbladder to go awry? So then we want to clear those emotions or was the gallbladder 
dysfunctional, causing all the anger in a person's life. Think, I mean, liver and gallbladder are the same on the acupuncture chart, if you will, and with emotions. So, I mean, again, anger, frustration, resentment, those are emotions of, of an alcoholic, right? That's putting a lot of stress on their liver. So we can work from that perspective. Certainly we wanna look at what foods a person's taking, consuming that is causing a lot of problems. Gallbladder, favorite example of that is, is glyphosate, the pesticide in Roundup, the toxin in Roundup inhibits bile production and inhibits methylation and inhibits bile production and, and it obliterates the intestinal lining. So things like aloe are going to help rebuild that intestinal lining, right? Help the bile flow to reduce the causes of that. But we want to get the toxins out of our environment, out of our diet as best we can to eliminate the causes of, say, the right-sided headache or the whole head headache. So putting it all together. Um, incidentally, you know, I was tempted about to finish up on that. Now, every muscle has an associated gland or organ. So that gives us a, you know, that's kind of where the foundation of applied kinesiology and Dr. Goodhart's work starting back in the 60s. So we can use, you know, reflex referred pain areas or muscles to identify where the body's dysfunctional and then whether it needs an emotional change, a structural change or nutritional change ultimately. Okay. You know, for those listening, that was a lot because <laughs> they're probably used to, you know, I go to a doctor and they write a prescription. I just have to go to my nearest pharmacy, fill it, and I'm done. I don't have to know about any of that stuff. Right. And to help clarify this, I was taught as a chiropractor to consider nutrition, exercise, rest, right. positive mental well-being, properly functioning nervous system. And, and the way you're picking that apart is really the difference between Eastern and Western medicine. Yes. To help people that are used to just getting the prescription and filling it, can you explain the difference and why that's so important? I'll do my best. It's a massive subject, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So Eastern medicine, if you will, is based on energy flow and acupuncture meridians, ultimately as how they were termed. And those meridians go through muscles. So that's where the Dr. Goodhart originally came up with the muscle organ correlation that has been confirmed, you know, for millions of visits and, and approaches uh, over the last 50 years or whatever it's been. So there's that muscle organ correlation that brings the Eastern medicine in with the Western medicine in that, I mean, my favorite thing to do is go to functional med seminars and learn all the biochemical pathways and then figure out how to physically test those without having to run all the expensive time-laden labs. So those pathways can be figured out. I mean, there's great marriage between the two. When we marry the, the two realms of, you know, how is physiology dysfunctional and what is it that we're doing that's causing it ultimately. So most of the people listening to this are going to be health pursuers themselves. So it starts with just simply listening, right? And <laughs> so every, oh, oops, every time I eat, you know, a whole wheat sandwich, then I end up with a right-sided headache. Okay. Now I understand the trigger. Tomatoes are another example that tomatoes can affect bile flow and acetylcholine, the, the brain chemical that will drive that bile production. And so tomatoes is a very common trigger for a right-sided headache. So it, it may be that the person, and I recommend people do this, keep a log of what they're eating or what they're doing, and then put in there, oops, I have back pain. I have my headaches. I have whatever shoulder pain. It flared on this day. What was the common thread the last three times this happened? So that's a good way to kind of sleuth it out or figure it out on our own. You know, somebody trained in this type of stuff, or even if it's a, you know, the chiropractor, if your chiropractor is telling you every time you go in there, T4 is out, or they're starting to get that Dowinger's hump, slouchy posture. Those are signs that the gallbladder is dysfunctional. And so take it the next step and, and figure out what it is that's, that's being done. So it's, it's, can't we all get along, right? <laughs> merge right. the Eastern, merge the Western so that we can all work on our best to, to get the best resolve resolution for a patient, for the people needing help. <laughs> right. Right. So you've given me some insight to what a visit to your office is like, okay. and as far as the treatment they might expect, do they get treated on a first visit? In my office, we treat on the first visit. Yes. I, I, again, kind of like you, you like to win. I, I like to demonstrate that, hey, <laughs> miracles are here. <laughs> so right. I want to demonstrate. And for me, then the follow-up visit is, this is what we found. What's left? You know, how much change did you experience so that we can then 
say, all right, we, we nailed it. Good. You know, go forth and prosper or hey, we still got still have some aspects that need to be ferreted out. You enjoying the show thus far? One of the many health secrets that we have covered on the show is all around aloe vera, specifically drinking raw aloe vera. Our aloe vera has helped our customers effectively heal their gut, increase their intestine health, lower inflammation in the body, eliminate and or decrease acid reflux, have glowing skin and hair, and so much more. Now, as a frequent member of our audience, you will be exposed to exclusive specials and coupon codes for the awesome products manufactured by Haley Nutrition. That's right, for simply being awesome and tuning in, you can get a mini discount to help you optimize and better your health. To see how we can help and support you on your health journey, tune into the episodes and listen for coupon codes that you can use at www.haleynutrition.com before you make your orders of raw aloe vera. Once again, it's www.haleynutrition.com. Now, back to the show. When people come to me for chiropractic, they know that there's different kinds of chiropractic and some people use instruments, some people use their hands and tables that drop and machines that stretch and pull apart and right. there's Y strap and ring dinger and there's all kinds of different <laughs> chiropractic techniques. Can you tell me a little bit about the Dr. Versal technique? Right. And actually it is uh, <laughs> called that, but it's founded off on applied kinesiology principles. There's a chart behind me that most of you are listening to this, but it has points all over the body that will help us understand where the body's dysfunctional. And so I look at the muscle organ correlations just because it gives me a super easy, super efficient, effective way to figure out where the body's dysfunctional. So I do a lot of muscle and reflex testing. I certainly listen to what the person is suffering with because whatever, you know, they're there because they have a headache. They're there because they have digestive problems. That is their priority. They're the one writing the check. So <laughs> I want to meet their needs. And so it starts with, Hey, you know, what is your, what is your priority today to make change? And then I, I do my detective work to figure out what it is that would be causing that so that they can leave knowing what to change and what to do. <clears throat> Is there acupuncture involved or acupressure or? So I used to use some of that, but the points, most of the points are acupuncture points that I use more primarily diagnostically now. <clears throat> so, you know, there's a part, well, there's a point for that has to do with blood flow. So I'll use that to determine, you know, whether blood flow or circulation is an issue or you know, even sometimes touching over, for example, the thyroid or touching over the gallbladder will give an, an idea. Um, and then. Yes, understanding those acupuncture points often is an adjustment in that area, works really well. Or, you know, why is that point tender? When I make the appropriate change, the tenderness of that point, the tenderness of that muscle will literally go away on the table. So then we know, okay, this is this is the holy grail. This is the, the trigger for your problems. Oh, wow. The neuroemotional technique that you employ, what was that called? Neuroemotional technique or NET, uh, used a lot of the Eastern medicine uh, principles and the emotions, and then tied that in with the organs and then used some kind of chiropractic techniques or acupuncture techniques, both merged them both to detox, if you will, the physical manifestations of emotions. So people that are in psychological care, I've heard psychologists often say, man, we just made a year's worth of progress because we got rid of the physical storage of those emotions, right? Think of, you know, the CPA at tax time when their shoulders start burying their ears <laughs> or, you know, stress comes along. There's muscle patterns with that and emotions that can get stored physically in each organ. So there's the emotional points right on the center of the, on the forehead there that ultimately comes down to connecting those with whatever the organ is. Uh, and then again, if you have the tools, figuring out what specific emotional conundrum had happened, you know, short circuiting the body. Okay. You want to get, you know, when I was about on that one, <laughs> I know you like stories, <clears throat> um, had a, a kid that got hit by a car. And so I treated him, got take, take care of the physical aspects of it. But his mom says, Hey, is there something you can do for, you know, he was an A student. And then ever since he got hit, his, his grades are D's and he's struggling in school. And we've taken care of the physical manifestations. I said, well, what do we know so far? She says, well, took him to the, the eye doctor and they said, he's colorblind. I said, what is it? And they said, he's blue, green, colorblind. I'm like, well, that's not colorblind. <laughs> what do we, you know, I said, you know, Johnny, what do you, what do you remember from the accident? He says, well, I was walking across the crosswalk on a green light and a blue minivan hit me. 
So we, we had him, you know, recall those reels in his head, if you will, and desensitize his body to those specific emotions of the blue minivan and the green walk light. And his grades went back up to an A literally that week. Hmm. <laughs> so that's kind wow. of how the, you know, profound and, and a lot of us chiropractors are working physically with auto accidents and that sort of stuff. We can adjust them. They feel great. And then they see another blue minivan again and they go back out to where they were. So helps to pull that all together for more lasting results. Yeah, that's really interesting because admittedly, when I'm seeing patients, I'm thinking of the physical right. and not always the emotional component right. to why it keeps coming back. And I have certainly recognized there's certain patterns, people that are having emotional challenges in their marriage have certain kinds of pains and people that are having work related or having certain kinds of pains. Right. And, and there's certainly definite patterns there. Absolutely. I mean, even from a structural perspective as a chiropractor, I mean, it could be as simple as, you know, what do you remember about the accident? And then you hit the C2 <laughs> talking chiro speak, right? But you just see two as they're remembering the accident that will kind of desensitized to those triggers as well. Or, you know, you had, when your hubby said he was leaving, you give him adjustment as they're thinking about him delivering the news or, you know, those types of things, those can help lock that adjustment in as well. Interesting. When I was about 18 or 19 years old, I was moving and I remember trying to lift this couch up by myself and carry it down a flight of stairs. And it was one of the pullout beds that, you know, a (laughs) lot of metal in it, very, very heavy. And I'm doing it by myself. Wow. And I, when I yanked it off the ground on the second floor, I realized I did something bad. And after walking through the stairs, the winding stairs by myself with this thing over my head and then thinking, how am I going to get it on my pickup truck? The bed was open. I knew once I put it down, I was dead. So I had to do it in one shot. And so I kind of, you know, got a running start and got on the bed and then just dropped it. Wow. Then I couldn't walk for the next eight months or so. Right. Tried some different doctors, finally figured out how to fix it myself. Okay. And that was the inspiration to say, yeah, you are supposed to be a chiropractor, Mike. You know, you decided when you were 13, you wanted to be a chiropractor. Your guidance counselor talked you out of it. Mm. And here's the confirmation that you're actually supposed to do it. Right. And from that point on, I attracted a lot of people with low back issues. Right. (laughs) What's it like for you? Are you attracting mostly headaches or what's your practice look like? Yeah, lots of chronic illness. I mean, I got into it similarly as an athlete. Again, I took, you know, talked about the bodybuilding and as I, I ended up, I race mountain bikes or race bikes now predominantly because I feel better doing aerobic exercise. So, I mean, initially I was pursuing the athletic realm because I wanted to perform at my best. Um, but realistically, it's the chronically ill people that are talking to each other about their problems. And so they all refer. <laughs> and they're the people that are motivated to change finally, you know, that they've, broken down to the point where they need help. So lots of chronic illness that we see from a back pain perspective, just again, to, to scratch your back on the aloe perspective, the quadratus lumborum muscle, which attaches from the lower ribs to the pelvis, that's that whole flank area type low back pain, that muscle is associated with colon function. So when a lot of back pain is going to be tied to what's going on with your gut, how your bowel movements, how often, you know, proper shape and form, all that stuff. I don't need samples or any of that, but (laughs) um, fixing the bowels will get rid of often the low back pain. So somebody comes in with low back pain, you know, they point to it. Typically it's going to be that flank quadratus lumborum muscle area. Then we look at what's going on with the colon. They can do some temporary relief with that large intestine four legendary acupuncture point on the thumb web, right where the crease of the thumb stops. That point is uh, called our large intestine four. That will give some temporary relief for that, uh, or actually literally relax that quadratus lumborum muscle. But again, we want to look at why the colon's not functioning properly. You know, are they eating too much wheat? Are they eating too much dairy? Or they, did they have grief or sadness that set it all up? Loss of a loved one. Those are all right. Those are emotions that can affect the lungs or the large intestine. So we clear that out and boom, they leave the office, no more back pain, no more, you know, in that case, it would have been a full head headache. So then they know ideally what the triggers are. You know, do they need to take a probiotic? Do they need to take their aloe juice on a regular basis to heal the gut and and prevent the long, big uglies and feel their best? 
for the colon, we think of its function, which is re to remove water. Yeah. Um, so if that wasn't functioning, I guess loose stools could be one symptom, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not doing what it should do and not moving things through and someone might be constipated. What are we talking about with this col colon malfunction that you mentioned? Is that both sides of the spectrum? Yes. So, so yes, a lot of what the colon does is remove water, right? And, and take that back into the system. The, the literature's full of the gut brain uh, co correlation now that a lot of the neurotransmitters, right? People are familiar with serotonin and you know, potentially acetylcholine, things like that. Most of that is actually made in the gut. So when that gut bacteria is functioning properly, then we have optimum health. When that gut bacteria is out of whack, then we don't. So for example, you mentioned the runs, that often is a poor sugar metabolism. I mean, there's a yeast overgrowth that opens the valve. There's two primary valves that kind of regulate rate of elimination. There's the ileocecal valve and the valve of Houston. Those valves tend to stick open if there's an abundance of yeast or yeast overgrowth in the body. And so that'll also set up leaky gut. So then the person's going to have brain fog. They'll have bicipital tendonitis in the front of the shoulder, often with yeast overgrowth. Um, the fun thing about the yeast overgrowth, uh, setting up the runs like that, is almost immediate. Like for me, if I eat a protein bar that's got a sweetener that doesn't agree with me, or a, a, I borrow my friend's ride food when I'm riding my bike, almost by the time I'm done with it, I'll get neck extensor tension, tension on the side of the neck. And what happens, there's a physical manifestation there that basically turns off those muscles when the body's um, grappling with yeast overgrowth. So that tells me, oops, that bar didn't work. Or, you know, that, that, uh, food snack, riding food uh, didn't work well. And so I, I will avoid it. And no, then I know what the cause is. I mean, that's the person, ah, I feel like I need an adjustment now, <laughs> almost by the time they finish it. So that's a nice immediate feedback when there's yeast overgrowth. <clears throat> the other side of that constipation typically is uh, can be poor protein metabolism, but it's more often than not, it's poor fat metabolism. Again, we go back to the gallbladder. The gallbladder emulsifies, digests those fats when it's working properly. If the gallbladder is congested and, and, and the bile is not flowing as it should, undigested fat causes a spasm of those valves that I just talked about. And so then food gets stuck, if you will. It's a protective mechanism in the body, uh, much like the valves open to get the yeast out. Conversely, the valves will close to give us more time to assimilate those good fats. And so it, both of them are protective mechanisms that God has put in the body to, to keep us well when we make bad choices. <laughs> um, so often it's fixing um, fat metabolism to relax and get the, the colon working properly. There's also, you know, obviously, like you talked about dehydration, you know, thyroid regulates a lot of that. So there's upstream potential causes, but for the most part, it's fat metabolism or sugar metabolism regulating the rate there. You know, as, as I've been reading some of your book, I am realizing, you know, a lot of stuff, you <laughs> know, you. more than me, <laughs> you know, a lot, I'm and it's very well organized too. Mm -hmm. I am going to unpack a little bit of what you said, because you were talking about different communication that happens in the body Yes, in that you were talking about how you ate something and instantly made a connection as to, you know, this causes that in me. So I'm not going to do that anymore. And these are things that I try to help my people understand, my followers, my customers, my patients, that one is your body communicates in a lot of ways. It's not just the brain through the spine and, and nervous system. And, yes. you know, there are meridians, there's intercellular communication, there's things that are living inside you that talk to each other. And there are cells that travel to different areas of the body in the blood. You know, I can get an injury and somehow the immune cells know to accumulate in that area. Right. There's all kinds of little handoffs, chemical handoffs between cells and, and little, not only synapses, not only chemical synapses between nerves and, and, and muscle fibers and things like that, but synapses from one cell to another. And there's, right. you know, covalent charges and ionic charges and things that make things change in our body communicating everywhere. Right. Now, we don't even have to know about that stuff to get well. We do need to pay attention to the signs, to the symptoms. When I eat this, this happens to me. Right. Now, there are cheat sheets and guides, things that you know more than me about. You know, you know more about blood typing than I do. Thank you. Or 
one thing I like, and you've already mentioned it, is the diet log, which is kind of a keep it simple. Yes. Stupid. The kiss principle. <laughs> keep it simple, I don't, Smarty. I don't know. If, yeah. So yeah, I don't. I don't know if you actually keep a diet log. I think what what you've kind of mentioned. You know, you don't eat sugar anymore. I ate the sticky bar or whatever it was, and it caused this in my neck. You just make the association. I don't need to write it down to see the pattern. I know this is what did it. If I had MSG, I would know like that. I don't need to reference a diet log. How can people make those connections better through the diet log and how does that look? Yeah. I mean, it's any operate from the perspective, anything can affect anything ultimately. Right. I mean, there's, I can't tell you how many times I've figured things out on patients. I mean, the, the, uh, glyphosate thing is a great example for years. I've kept saying, wait, gallbladders, you know, wheat seems to muck up the gallbladder. What is the deal? And then I heard this, this researcher, MIT researcher, Stephanie Seneff talking about how, you know, glyphosate in the wheat inhibits bile production. It's like, there's the answer, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, we can figure those things out. We don't necessarily have to understand Krebs cycle or, you know, the biochemistry that happens. I mean, it's about being your own best advocate. Doctors aren't always going to be able to figure it out. I mean, you're, you live with you. <laughs> so pay attention. So again, maybe it is, maybe you have to keep a log for a week or, or two or or even more simplistically, oops, I had a headache. Write down the last three things that you ate so that, you know, that way it's not as time consuming about writing every single thing you eat. Um, you, you can work backwards from symptom, you know, oops, I ate these three things, you know, the second time you did it, wait, I, this, here's the same similarity in the food. So it'll start rising to the surface of what the triggers are. Yes, the blood type diet also can help simplify that. And there's an app, the blood type diet app, I have no correlation in there. It's three ninety nine, but that way you have, I mean, everybody has their phone with them at all times. Right. So, I mean, that's part of what really proved out the blood type for me. I'd, I'd take my daughter to Mexican food on our way to church. And every time I'd fall asleep in church, it's like, wait a minute, what'd I eat? <laughs> and so I kept modifying it until I wasn't falling asleep in church. And I figured out some of the different beans in there for me, black beans will cause an insulin dump, you know, corn for sure. I, I don't touch corn because it'll give me L5 low back pain, center of the low back adrenal type of low back pain almost immediately, uh, if not the next morning. But again, beans will cause that hypoglycemia, which then leads to brain fog, it'll cause carb sugar cravings. So you pull out the app and realize, oops, that, that black beans listed on the avoid list. Now I understand the correlations. So there's tools like that that can help us be our best advocate and, and lobby for ourselves to be our best. <laughs> Right. Yeah. There's no one diet is best for everybody. We can't be here saying, Hey, you need to eat like this. You need to eat all animal foods or all, you know, vegetation only. You need to be vegan or vegetarian right. or, or, you know, no carbohydrates or no fats or no proteins, you know, focus on, you know, everyone's going to be different for me. I do well with a balance between animal foods and fruits and vegetables. Yes. I do well with things that are organic, mm -hmm. things that are natural, real foods, right. not processed. We can pretty much say that for everyone. You want real food, not processed. For sure. I tend to do better on less carbohydrates, more fats, and more proteins. Right. Um, well, isn't fat horrible for you? No, that was a lie told to us. <laughs> but I, I like the fact that you are on the same page in that no, everyone's different. We need to figure out the foods that yes. work for us, for you. You need to figure out the foods that work for you. Right. 100%. Yeah. I'm Dr. Haley interrupting this podcast. As a thank you for listening, here's a coupon code you can use at HaleyNutrition.com. During the month of July 2024, get 20 bucks off your entire purchase of $200 or more. If you're purchasing our famous raw frozen aloe vera gel and have been only getting two bottles at a time, this is an excellent opportunity to upgrade your order to four bottles. The summertime is brutal to the frozen food industry and two bottles just melt too quickly. But four bottles ship a lot better. They will still melt quite a bit in the mail for three days, but will arrive much colder than two bottles. Or use the coupon to try some of our other products. The Aya Greens vegetable and fruit powder is a customer favorite. An excellent way to get your phytonutrition. The Youth Therm Aloe Cream is our number one add-on product. I use it every day. So head over to HaleyNutrition.com and use the code HAPPYJULY. One word, no spaces, 
for $20 off your order of $200 or more now through the end of July 2024. If you're enjoying this podcast, please give it a thumbs up or leave a review, depending on which platform you're on. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of the show. I was a bodybuilder, so I was eating high protein meals and all that. And I just, you know, in school, I'm like, oh, vegetarian is the way I need to eat. Honey, we're going to be vegetarians. And so my wife and I became vegetarians and she thrived and I got sick almost immediately. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This didn't work for me. It's, it's okay. It's because I'm not eating enough protein. You know, again, I'm a B blood type. And so for me, you know, veg- uh, avocados crash my immune system. Tomatoes will cause me to crave sugars and, and, you know, some of the other corn, those are all crash my immune system. So I was eating a bunch of that stuff, trying to be this healthy vegetarian. And those foods, for most of those, the vegetable in general, pescatarian or vegetable type diet works great for the A blood type, which is my wife. For me, it was wrong. So then we went basically what now would be called paleo. <clears throat> and I did high protein. She got sick. So <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, what's something's here? And then I got exposed to the blood, blood type diet and I'm the son of a skeptic. I said, okay, nice guideline, but I'm going to eat avocado because I'm, I'm at that time I was racing and I still am, but racing bikes. So I, I'm like, I need the good fats. Every time I eat that avocado, my immune system crashed. My sinuses would get worse. It's like, wait a minute, this isn't working, but it's my love, my beloved avocado. Now what? <laughs> you know, so I had to find yeah. healthier substitutes that would work. My wife thrives on avocado. She does great on it. She puts it on practically everything. Works wonderful for her. My wife and I do well on the same foods. I think I hit the jackpot on that one. Lucky, nice. <laughs> you know, we, we can shop together and we love the same things. I would think it would be tough to have, you know, two different diet plans in the same room, right, in the right. same house, in the same refrigerator. Wow. I have three daughters, all three different blood types. <laughs> oh, no. I call it God's sense of humor to make sure I learn them all, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, and I don't even know my own blood type. Yeah. I think it would, I'd probably do well to know and look into it and say, oh, that makes a lot of sense as I, but I don't even know what kind of blood I have. My guess is you're an old blood type, but check it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and you say that because of the, like the fats and the proteins or the fats and proteins. Uh, sounds like you enjoy anaerobic exercise, high, hit, you know, high intensity training, de-stresses the old blood type. Carbonated water is, is stabilizing and is actually good for the old blood type. For me, it crashes my immune system as a B blood mm-hmm. type and the A blood types don't do well on it. Those will thrive. I, I mean, a couple of my O docs that have worked for me would do that, you know, seltzer water as their midday snack and it like pep them up and keep them going for the rest of the day. So things yeah, I kind of like the bubbly thing. I try to I try to not have too much of it only because there is some research and maybe it is yeah. in different blood types that suggest this was through rats yeah. where they suggested it actually wasn't sodas making people fat, but it could be the bubbles. Interesting. And they essentially did experiments where they gave rats plain water and bubbly water mm-hmm. and flat soda is an option. OK. And in the different groups that were there, the rats that got the bubble water actually got the fattest. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's interesting. There's not that much, you know, research that's been done on it to really solid lock that in, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's a potential. Right. Right. But my, you know, this is my uh, treat. My every now and then I'll have the carbonated water. 25 years ago, before I knew better, it was diet soda. Ouch. And I eventually made the connection and realized that every time I have a Diet Coke, it was a Diet Coke at the time, mm-hmm. that was my thing, I would have tinnitus. Oh. Now, I actually had tinnitus continuous because I had Diet Coke every day mm-hmm. 25 years ago. Yeah. Maybe it's 30 years ago. I don't know. Eventually, I decided it wasn't good for me because the aspartame. Yeah. And I knew that was a neurotoxin. So I stopped. But one day I wanted to go back to it and I never really realized that my tinnitus had disappeared until it came back Mm. almost immediately upon having that Diet Coke. Yes. Yeah. Which made me realize, wow, symptoms like tinnitus are probably just biochemical from crap Mm -hmm. that we're consuming in our diets. Right. So much there to unpack. <laughs> I mean, that's a hot subject of mine. I mean, you read uh, the first part of the book, right? It sounds like where I talked about that to some degree. I just, in January, I lost my mom basically to diet sodas. <laughs> 
So uh, wow. very, a, very much a sensitive subject to me. And you know, I told my mom back 20, 25 years ago, you know, look, what you're doing is not going to work. You're going to, you're going to be dependent on others. I missed the mark there. She wasn't dependent on anybody. She just passed basically 10 years before she should have. And ultimately it was, it was brain degeneration, you know, brain swelling and kidneys shut down, you know, and she had arthritis and all kinds of other stuff. Ultimately it was because she literally lived on, she had diet soda in under her arm 24 seven. Um, hmm. you know, so yeah, it's very sensitive subjects for me, uh, physically for your athletes that are listening to this aspartame, even in gum or breath mint, sometimes diet sodas that can cause a weakness of the quad muscles, the thigh, thigh muscles. And so that'll cause those kneecap patellar tracking type of aches and pains when a person runs or rides a bike. So there's another kind of subtle hint for people to watch for, to head off the Alzheimer's, you know, the brain neuro degeneration and inflammation and depression that would go along with consumption of something like a diet soda or, or even again t to the extent of gum or breath mints that almost always unless you're pursuing something without it virtually all gums and breath mints are going to have aspartame and it makes it addictive as well it makes it sweet sugar-free low calorie <laughs> but addictive so i mean if i was running the business yeah. that's what i'd want to create too right <laughs> yeah hmm. Uh, in your opinion, is there any safe, sweet uh, substitutes? Um, stevia works for most people. It just uh, it's often it's it's very very sweet, and if you can see it, it's probably too much. So most companies are going to bind it with something else. Some of the companies use bind it with urethritol, which is not great. That's kind of along those you know aspartame sort of neurochemistry. Um, so some of the different companies, like there's a liquid stevia and some of the other stevia products work well. A lot of the supplement companies are even using Luhan now. That's kind of the, the current buzz. So that Luhan is a nice sweetener that doesn't seem to have a glycemic index, seems to work pretty well um, at this point in time in the research. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, 15, 20 years ago, you know, they were talking about the sugar alcohols and the xylitols and right. suggesting that that was safe and even beneficial for your teeth. Why? Because it's antibacterial. Wait a second. <laughs> the things I eat, I'm feeding to my gut flora. Should I be feeding them an antibacterial? Right. Something that's designed to kill them. Right. Uh, no. <laughs> yes, we won't. No, it's not. It's not. It's not good. But for me, yeah, stevia is my go-to as well. And it is very, very powerful. So yeah, you know, there, there's even stuff coming out now. Stevia, that, it only takes a tiny, tiny bit. See, right. And they're even saying that it's got some anti-Lyme properties these days. I don't know if you've seen any of that. They're saying stevia may help kill some of the Lyme, Lyme pathogens, interestingly. <laughs> I did not know that. I did read about the anti-cancer uh, okay. properties, mm -hmm. but I did not know anti-Lyme. Yeah. So it's, wow. I imagine at some point we'll hopefully figure out it's, it has some benefit to pathways like sulfation or methylation. For me, methylation and, and P450, the first phase of detox, starting to talk, you know, higher end here, but those are key pathways in the, the cancer sort of paradigm. So anything we can do to facilitate those would be beneficial. Um, basically the mechanism, uh, I try to put it in simple terms, methylation, one of the key pathways in the liver, that activates tumor suppressor, the tumor suppressor gene. So when methylation gets inhibited or doesn't function properly, then we start losing that mechanism to break down those tumor cells. I and mean, we always have tumor cells, right? But why do they run amok? And so methylation gets compromised by stress, unfortunately, it gets compromised by toxic metals, which are two heavy hitters. And then now uh, retroviruses, things like think <laughs> So those are all potential triggers that can inhibit that methylation pathway open the door for, if there was good news in cancer, it opens the doors for more benign cancers. And so that, that's going to be the cancer that's localized that we can cut out and, and move on. Um, so then conversely, uh, when P450, that pathway, when that's the first phase of detoxification. So when that pathway runs amok and the toxins don't get then properly detoxed in the rest of the phase two detox pathways, that's what sets the stage for malignant cancers. That mm -hmm. pathway is typically runs amok, if you will, from a more cold flu, what I call a DNA virus that ramps up that phase one detoxification. And so then we, we basically oxidize, if you will, toxins, and then they don't get properly broken down. And that causes cells all over the body to mutate. Sidebar. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, I was going to say something about it, but I, you know, I, I, I'm going to actually have to cut one of the words out that you said, because the last person that used that word, 
YouTube had a certain warning sign underneath my video. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so we'll call it mutated it is what cells it is. when cells causes cells to mutate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Tell me your favorite testimonial or even a couple of them. People that came in with no hope maybe have been to others or maybe maybe they were, maybe you were their first stop but life changed yeah so many <laughs> uh what's a what's a good one yeah we just talked about a gal with cells mutating on the right side of her head and we were able to do these changes for the gallbladder and we were able to physically see on mri the shrinkage of those mutating cells no no cancer we're allowed to talk about okay <laughs> yeah. all right it was COVID virus oh no that thing <laughs> okay <laughs> so that was retroviruses that we were talking about there <laughs> so yeah so that causes the cells to mutate. And, and it just really begs the question of anything right side on the right side of the head. Yeah, a lot of right sided issues are gallbladder, for example. So in her case, most of what I was doing was things to facilitate the functioning of the gallbladder. Of course, every time she was there, I'd adjust T4 and adjust C6. But before I did that, I'd look at what it was that was causing the gallbladder to not function properly. Things like choline, uh, helps the gallbladder function, beets, leaf juice, those thin the bile, those will help the gallbladder. So those are things somebody can do at home if they have these right side of headaches or incidentally, the right knee is often going to get weak because the popliteus, little muscle in the back of the knee that gets weak when the gallbladder is not functioning. So I, have, I had her taking a beet based product, had her, you know, off of the, the wheat, corn, soy, oats type stuff that had the glyphosate in it. And we treated the emotions, the anger, frustration, and resentment that were showing up. And it was a beautiful thing to see that tumor actually shrink in the right side of her brain. <laughs> wow. That's Indeed. huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I, I used to like telling my stories, but I've never, I haven't had one quite like that. So now mine, I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to tell mine again. <laughs> <laughs> stories inspire. You keep it going. <laughs> it's that human element. <laughs> no, my, well, my favorite was just pure chiropractic with this guy, Charlie, who came in and pain going down his arm, pain going down his leg. And it started that day. And I, for me, I, at the time I took an x-ray and when I saw his L3 like this, yeah. I got all excited and put him on his side and laid into it because I was determined to fix it in one visit. Right. And Charlie was a, a black man that looked a little bit like the guy that was on that little fishing boat in the movie Caddyshack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you've seen that, Rodney Dangerfield's coming in this huge yacht and the guy sitting on the boat fishing. Rodney driving this yacht doesn't see the guy fishing and he the guy fishing sees the boat. He casually looks over, turns away and then realizes it's a boat coming. He looks back at, at, at the boat and his eyes turn about the you know size of donuts and he jumps off into the water. When I adjusted this guy's lumbar vertebrae, he had that exact same look. He reminded me of the guy jumping off the fishing boat in, in <laughs> Caddyshack. Right. And it was one of those, like, what did, what just happened? And it, it, it sounded like someone literally sat on a bag of potato chips. I mean, just everything popping and crunching. And I moved that bone and yes, I fixed it in one visit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but when he came back the next day, it was funny. He said, he said, Dr. Haley, something you did. I said, what's going on? He said, first thing he said is, he said, I can have sex again. No. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I can have sex again. And I looked at his intake forms. I said, you didn't check this box where you were having a challenge in that area. He said, I, I didn't know it would, would be related. I didn't know it could have anything to do with my back. Something he did. I, I said, what are you talking about? And there's more. He said, yeah. He said, I don't have constipation anymore. Mm. I said, how long have you been constipated? He said, for 10 years. Ouch. I said, yeah. I said, what was that look on your face? Because it was instant when I adjusted him. Right. He said, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he was instantly calculating how much time am I going to make it home? I got something going on here yeah. that I got to deal with now. Right. 
Yes, yeah, that's a great story. And that's the power of what a blessing we have to, to change lives in such a profound way. Uh, I mean, how can how can we retire out of this, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Chiropractic is a, a wonderful thing. And I like the whole body approach that you're taking to it, looking at other things. So I, I got a kind of a introductory version of your book. Okay. Thank you for that. Absolutely. When is it actually going to be available where people can purchase it? Yeah. So it's in the final stages of editing. So yeah, people can go to headacheadvantage.com on that website. There's, there's links to the seven different patterns. They can click on those links and that'll discuss the typical food triggers for those patterns of headaches or links to potentially purchase supplements um, based on that pattern. I try to whittle it down with a couple of questions so that tried this one supplement. I'm a minimalist uh, from that perspective, try to do as much with as little as possible. So I try to yeah, keep it simple. I know a lot of people in my, uh, in this whole body field recommend protocols for every single thing that person has, and it's a bit overwhelming. So I try to keep it very simple. So headacheadvantage.com is, is they can put their email in there. They'll get notified uh, when the book is available, which should be uh, uh, from the time, from this time of recording, it should be another month, uh, probably two months, literally by the time it's published and, and printing and so on. Okay. Excellent. And tell us about your practice. Where is it? And is that a different website? So drverzal.com, D-R-V-R-Z-A-L. Uh, I'm in Laguna Niguel, Southern California. Been doing that, as it sounds like, as you for a little over 30 years now. We have a great team there, several docs that all practice uh, similarly. So love to see you that way. If you're, if you're local, we actually since that other infectious thing that you talked about a few years ago, we've been doing remotes. Even I have, you know, patients all over the world that we can do remote to help them figure out what the triggers in their life or lifestyle are. Excellent. Excellent. Is there anything else that you wish I had asked that you'd love to share? What a great question. <laughs> uh, it's such a wonderful subject. I mean, mostly I just thank you for what you're doing and trying to help educate the population and, and help inspire people to change. Let's, let's help empower people to learn, you know, take advantage <laughs> of what their body's trying to tell them. And so I, I commend you for what you're doing and, and making a difference and helping to create products that can help people be healthier and enjoy a, a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can say the same about you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. Appreciate the opportunity. Take good care. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that episode today on The Dr. Haley Show. Make sure to hit subscribe on whichever platform you are listening to this. If this episode made you think of someone, go ahead, take a screenshot, and share this exact episode with them. You can catch the show notes for this episode on www.drhaley.com. If you want to geek out with Dr. Michael Haley on other radical health topics, be sure to check out his YouTube channel where he posts exclusive video content. All the details are at www.drhaley.com and we can't wait to hang out with you on the next episode.